everyone to get down. Kevin had somehow managed to get smuggle in a razor blade from the jail and tried to murder his attorney in the back of the courtroom. Sweat This video out of Oregon is wild. It all went down a half hour west of Portland where a guy was due in court. This gentleman was on trial, starting his trial. They're actually starting the jury selection process this morning. As seen in this surveillance video, police escort the guy into the courtroom after taking a bathroom break. And shortly after, an officer takes him out of his handcuffs and then removes his leg restraints. You might guess where this is going. The guy then casually stands up and bolts out of the courtroom. He makes his way down the hall as the officers pursue on foot. The guy gets in the way of someone in another part of the building as he makes his way to an exit. A woman kind of tries to stop the guy as he rushes out of a door, but he gets away as officers lag behind. You can even see the guy going out some doors marked staff only. The guy's bold escape led to an intense pursuit where police set up a local perimeter and pursued the guy with search teams, police dogs, and drones. Cops spotted him twice, but he was able to get away each time, and locals were understandably spooked. Oh my gosh, that's scary. <laughs> that's really scary. I just want to go home. <laughs> um, that's bad. Over the course of a two-hour search, police received a tip that the guy was hiding out in a nearby apartment building, and police say they were able to find him hiding underneath a blanket in an empty apartment. Thankfully, the guy was then taken into custody. He was facing trial over an incident in 2021 when he allegedly stabbed a family member to death and then attacked another person before cops got him in cuffs. If you're wondering why he was taken out of his cuffs in court, it's because of an Oregon state law that requires the accused to appear unshackled before the jury so their decision isn't influenced by the restraints. Police say the 28-year-old suspect's original trial on multiple charges, including second-degree murder, will be rescheduled, and he's now facing an additional charge of second-degree escaping plus burglary for breaking into the empty apartment. It's worth noting that scientists say hiding under a blanket makes people feel safe, though it might not help you get away with murder. Man, shout out to Greg over at Crime Line. Uh, it's good to know that they caught this guy just because he stabbed a family member like that and then attacked somebody else trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, they can't be having no guy like this out here. And how was he able to slip away from the police officers twice? That's crazy. I just don't see how, but they got him. That's all that mattered. He definitely shouldn't get away this time. Kevin had somehow managed to get smuggle in a razor blade from the jail and tried to murder his attorney of July. So two weeks after she was actually last seen, you know, ramping up the old investigation, the first people the police went to speak with was her fiance, Ashley's fiance, a guy named Kevin Sweat. He was questioned about the last time he saw his girl. See, when Ashley's mother told the police about the last time she spoke with her, that was the 15th of July, Ashley said her and Kevin were going to Louisiana to get married. See, Kevin and Ashley were high school sweethearts. Is Kevin, her fiance. A Kevin who never missed the day's work, never took any time off, um, because it seems like there was no trip to Louisiana at all. And so, it was Kevin who said he had last seen her on the 17th of July on the side of the road. That they were driving southbound, going to Louisiana, yeah lads. And they got into some kind of argument. A few days later, that story changed again. They had gotten into a fight that morning on the 15th. Physical, a physical fight uh, as they were driving. They pulled over to a lake. Uh, she punched him. He threw a knife at her like a ninja. She grabbed it. She started cutting herself, went down to the pier on the lake. And then like, so, like he grabbed the knife and he cut her throat and he dumped her body in the lake. As you do. The lake was searched and there was no sign of Ashley. But what the police did do was go to Kevin's father's house in Willika. And it was there they found the remains of the fire. In that fire, they found bones. Ashley's DNA was also found on an axe. Kevin was arrested and charged with the murder of Ashley Taylor. Kevin was born in 1986, a native of uh, Okmulgee, OK, with me, pal. 
He had two siblings, two older brothers, and he attended Wilson High School in Okmulgee. Yo, Tilly was arrested and charged with the murder of his fiance. Ashley. He hadn't been like in the trouble, he hadn't been in trouble with the law, like at all. As I said, Kevin and Ashley became friends in high school. Two loners who found each other and, uh, well, tragedy struck young Kevin though in 2007, when one of his brothers died of a drug overdose. Something which was getting a tighter and tighter hold on the community. He kept up a blog at this time on DeviantArt under the name Joseph I. Morgan. It's his middle name and his mother's maiden name. He has, uh, well, pictures of himself with lots of guns. And in May 2010, he wrote, I'm living on my own or somewhere. I got engaged not too long ago. Biggest mistake of my life. Wish I knew she was a complete basket case, medicated and suicidal before I got with her. You also gotta wonder how much Slugger over here planned when his last post was three months to go. And when the police searched Kevin's home after he was arrested, they found some shells which matched shell casings from an incident which happened three years prior. But that double homicide was suddenly back in the news. A major development in the unsolved murder of two little girls from Walika. See, back in 2010, in January 2010, they discovered that Kevin had purchased the Glock in 2007, and it was the same caliber of one of the guns that killed the two young girls. Now, when the police though went to speak with him, he said that, you know, that by that time, he had sold a gun. He was questioned about the Walika murders. The girls say something? Did the girls no. throw something? Or, or what happened? What happened that day that set you off? There would be no point of shooting kids. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, there's no question. We know that you were there that day. And he said he'd been driving along that road they were on that day. North 3890 Road. Then he said he saw two monsters. I don't want to hear no lies. I didn't come here to hear lies. I came here to, to hear the truth. I'm guessing. I was mental issues. I was seeing shit. Okay, so you saw two demons. Is that what you're telling me? Mm -hmm. Two demons, he said. We're just racing at him. So he got one of the guns out, started blasting. Kevin Sweat was escorted out of a courthouse in Okima after being inside only a short time. Sweat has been charged in the murders of two Balika girls, Taylor Paschal Placker and Skyla Whitaker in 2008, but was already accused in the murder of his ex fiance Ashley Taylor. The death penalty was on the cards for all the killings. Just a few short days before the trial was due to start, he pleaded guilty to all the murders. He wanted to avoid the death penalty because he knew he would get it. The murder of his fiance Ashley could, you know, he could say the motive was, well, I mean, he was just in a very unhappy relationship. He's clearly a little bit unstable if he did that, so um, he just saw this as his only way out. But why kill the two young girls? The only thing that was on and in his mind um, when he shot two children was revenge. Remember his brother dying a few years before? Well, Kevin had come to believe that the Placker family had been the one to sell him drugs. So, to Kevin's mind, it was an eye, eye for an eye. He was due to be sentenced on the 24th of October 2014. And then things got just a little dramatic. In the courtroom, right before the sentencing, Kevin, he was in a back room with his court-appointed attorney when all of a sudden the guards were locking up the place and telling everyone to get down. Kevin had somehow managed to get, smuggle in a razor blade from the jail and tried to murder his attorney in the back of the courtroom. Sweat attacked his lawyer with that blade, cutting him on the neck. He was trying to slice open his attorney's throat. Now he did manage to get a cut in, but it wasn't life threatening. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole once for each murder. Been convicted of three murders is headed to prison. Today, a judge denied Kevin Sweat's chance for a new hearing. Sweat will spend the, his entire life in prison. In July, he entered a blind plea, saying that he's guilty for killing his fiance and two young girls. Kevin has proven more than enough that he is a very uh, willing killer. But there you go. That's the whole, that's the whole story. Tragic and just messed up. So you mean to tell me <clears throat> This crazy guy did not only do the unthinkable to his fiance and has the nurse to say what he said about her, but luckily, thank God, they was able to find some shells, some ammo, some bullets that lead back to those two girls that was missing. 
You know what I'm saying? So thank God they were able to find this guy. I hate it happened the way it did, but I'm happy it happened the way it did so they can, you know, the family can have some closure of what happened today, you know what I'm saying, to them girls, along with what he did with his fiance. Then this lunatic gonna try to take his attorney out. See, somebody like that, boy. That who, that's who you call they true satanic demonic. 